G'day Roosters. Let's talk about batch printing with the publish command in AutoCAD. Now why do we want to do this? Well, we want to be able to output our deliverables quickly. Now principally, that's going to be PDF sheets. Sometimes we still do paper, but often paper, if it's printed at all, comes off the PDFs that we've delivered to our clients. So here's a project that I have set up. I'm in print preview. And you can see it's got a list of drawings and the sheet size is A3. So it's not a big job, it's a, it's a small domestic project. But uh, let's look at how I've set up the job so that I can batch print in this. So you can see on this model here, it's one file. And in that file, I've got a bunch of paper space sheet tabs here. And you can see that they're, they're the drawings. There's a sheet number and the sheet description. Now let's look at the model space. So the model space is where everything is drawn on the project and you can see it's quite orderly here at the top. We've got the notes and annotations, uh, the general notes, they're at 1 to 100. Of course, it's pretty irrelevant what scale they are because they're just text, but I've had them at 1 to 100 because the plans are at 1 to 100. And then I've got details and you can see that there's a bunch of different groupings that I've got here. I've got footings and shorings together, I've got uh, concrete stairs and columns and walls together, I have got uh, uh, still details, I've got some slab on ground details and I've got the pool details down the bottom. So everything's drawn one to one but the text height's different depending on the scale. So you can see that text there it's suitably scaled to work at 1 to 100. And this text, which is smaller than that last one, is suitably scaled to be at 1 to 20. So the output in the paper space all comes out the same height, though relatively. So let's look at the paper space, and you can see how this is set up. So we have a view of that model from the model space in this sheet, and then we have the title block in here. Now if I delete the viewport of that model, you can see that only the title block is in the sheet for this project. So now if I go um, batch print, so and before I do that, so that's the publish command of course, you have to have a good page setup. So type in page setup and you can see what I've done here. Now this is set up in my drawing template, so I never have to set this, this is already permanently set up. But I've got a few of my favorite ones in here. So I've got A1 to A3, which is a 50% reduction if I want to print A1 drawings out as paper to my A3 printer, I can do that and it's 50% scale reduction. I've got the um, A1 PDF there as well and I have the A3 and the a a a B1. So the main things that you use, the go-to is the PDFs. They're the ones that you everyone wants. You can output those, deliver them to the client, they can put them up on their web management tools, whatever they're using, they can see them on their phones, they can see them on their computers, they can see them on their iPads, etc. So if I modify that p um, page setup, you can see how it's set up. I use CTP in AutoCAD, so color equals align thickness, so that's set up. I've got DWG to PDF, you can see it's A3, and critically, the scale's one to one. Now if I measure in across the top of this sheet here in paper space, you can do a sensibility check. See it's 403? Well that's within a cut sheet size of an A3 sheet. How, how can you, how can you uh, find a cut sheet size? Well I recommend going to uh, Google and just typing that in and you'll probably find it pretty easily. So. Um, but I like to use blog.draftsperson.net. Now, I think if I just type in cut sheet size, yeah, standard paper sizes. Yes, so here's a good article from blog.draftsperson.net forward slash standard paper sizes. It gives you the cut sheet sizes of metric ISO sheets. So A3 is 390, 297 millimeters high and 420 wide. Fun fact, all of the A series sheets in metric are based on an AO sheet of one, 
square metre size at the ratio of one to two based on those dimensions. So there is some thought behind it. So with um, so now I'm back in my paper space. So remember I, I saw that cut sheet in here as um, over 400. So we know that that was, it was 420, and that's 403. So that fits within the cut sheet size. So we know it's gonna come out right. Now let's publish that. So we'll publish that now. So as you notice there, I did that quickly, but by default, it just opened what was in what I'd already had open. Now I deleted the model space because I'm only printing from paper space. So I'll grab all of those sheets that I want to print and I'll select A3 PDF. The output is already set up and it's gonna use the page setup that I have in that sheet. So that's going to go off now and print in the background and that'll take a little while to output. You can see there's a little icon here that says job in progress. Now while that's outputting, I'll show you a couple of other tricks. Let's open sample two now. So I've got sample one and sample two open. Now sample two is a completely different project. It's thousands of kilometers away from that other project. So actually it's the structure in this is completely different. This is timber framed, it's very different. But it's a similar setup in principle. We've got general notes, plans and details, and everything's in model space. And then in paper space, it's almost the same. You've only got the title block in here. And once again, I've got paper space with tabs on there. Now, we, if I did a publish, publish now, it is possible that I would be able to publish both of those. So it'll pull up sample one and sample two in there. Now let's just close that because I'm going to show you something else, another trick. I'm going to open up something that's very different because sample one and sample two were both A3 sheet size. Now I'm opening a civil project and this is in A1 sheet size and this is completely set up differently in many different ways. And first of all, it's the job's in meters, not millimeters. It's traditional that we work in meters in civil because of the just the, the large amount of data we have to work with and often things are easier to, to read. You can imagine if that says 76 meters, you could have 76,000 there. So it just makes it easier to read, 75.8 meters. So you can see this, those contours are 200 millimeters or 0.2 meters apart from each other. So this is a very steep site and this was a tight car park to design. So this is a civil 3D job. It has a, a surface model, feature lines, points, etc., point groups, and there's a model there. Now, in the paper space, this is where I do, it, do do it a bit different in civil projects, is I have a lot of annotation in paper space. So there's two things overlaying the, on top of each other. If I delete the viewport there, you can see there was that text just dropped in there. Often people work like that in civil, it's easier way to work. One little trick I do in civil too is these retaining wall details are from my structural standard set and they're drawn in millimeters. Now, if I click on that, you can see that that is an XREF, an external reference. So if I open that XREF, it's in millimeters. It's easier to edit smaller objects in millimeters so I've left that in millimeters, but I've imported it into a civil job in meters and I can still print it out accurately into scale. So now I've got one, two, three samples open and I'm going to run the publish command again and you'll notice it's just gonna grab everything that I've got open now. I can add other sheets from drawings that aren't open. Now what I'm gonna do here to show you something that's different is I'm gonna delete all of sample one because I've already printing that. And I'm gonna delete sample two model space because we don't print from model space. And I'm gonna delete sample three model space. Now what I'm going to do here is sample two, just imagine sample two actually didn't have the A3 PDF set up in it. And I just realized that now I've run the publish command. What you can do is grab all of that, click this button here and go to import and Click on file sample one, you know that the correct plot page setup's in there. 
and you get this option. You can use imported. So I'm gonna use imported A3 PDF on that one. Now this one, sample three, it's an A1 sheet size. So that's double the size of an A3, twice as big. So I'm just going to click this one, A1 PDF, because I know it's set up. So you can print two different sheet sizes at the same time with this method. So that's definitely making things faster and see that error message, which I knew was going to happen. And the reason for that is because the previous plot has not completed. And that was just spitting out, uh, this icon here was just spitting out a little piece of paper at the top to show it's running and it looks like it's stopped now. So if I go to my output folder, yeah, so S602 was my last sheet. So that one just finished. So if I ran it now, it'll work. Yep, we're getting a little traction going on there. So that's starting to output. So while that's outputting, and before we go do our sensibility tech check, we'll just do a quick review here and the key things to remember. So the key thing is that you've got to have good model space, paper space set up. You've got to think about that before you start. Have a good template. Draw everything in model space, one-to-one -one and to the appropriate scale that you want to output. And then in paper space, have all your sheets set up and they're all the same size. So you can batch print really quickly. And now if I go to the sensibility check, you can see things sample two starting to spit out. So let's have a look at our sheet. So let's say, let's look at the ground floor plan on this one, sample one. And you can see it's a work in progress because there's some notes on it still. Now, one thing you can do is if you've got a PDF that's delivered to you and you want to check that it, what, what size is it? It might say A3 on here, but if you go print, and this might be easy to look at an A1, but I'll show you this one first. So I'm printing here and it's A3. If I change that to none, so it's no scale, you can see it fits in to that sheet size, A3. So this PDF has clearly been set up to work to an A3. Now, hopefully we have, no, we haven't yet. So we'll just go to that. We'll have a look at sample three when it outputs. So let's look at sample two now, sensibility check. And you can see, yeah, that's printed out. Now you can see I've had a splash of pastels on there just to make a few things clearer with some funky strip footings. Now in the PDF two I have, and in the drawing, I've got labeled over on the left-hand side here, an A3 sheet and a print reduction bar. And a lot of people ask, what the blazes is a print reduction bar for? Well, the purpose of that is when you print it out, a PDF to an A3, piece of paper, it's easy to print it wrong. And what I mean by that is that you can easily have it fit to printer margins instead of none, which will give you a slight change in the print scale. It might print it out at, instead of a one to 100 in A3, it might be one to 96 at A3. So what you can do is with a measurement tool, you can put this, measure this when it's printed out on paper. And if it's 50 millimeters, you know you've, you're correct. If it's 48, you know, something's slightly gone wrong. So that's the purpose of that. And of course, even if it's printed out wrong, you can still make a manual adjustment if you needed to, because you know, 50, 48, you can work a ratio out. So you can see now that the sample three has been output. So let's have a look at the plan there, the busy plan. And you can see that one's looking good too. So that's worked. And once again, we can check it by doing this. So it's printing to paper, A3, fit to margins. If I say none, you can see now clearly that that drawing does not fit on an A3. So it's not designed for an A3. It's an A1 sheet in this case. See, look what we've done here. In that short amount of time, is it 42 total items? 42, no, 37. 37 files have been easily batch printed because we've had a good page set up, we've had a good model space, paper space set up, and we can quickly produce drawings very quickly. And then the last thing that you might want to do,
though you probably keep these single files is you can download uh, one of those free simple PDF merge tools and you could merge the PDFs into sets if you wanted to do that.